Welcome to CSE Guru. In this session, we will discuss the topic operating system operations. In that, we are going to discuss about user mode and kernel mode. Modern operating system is interrupt driver. That is, when the CPU is executing one process without its completion itself, another process will raise the interrupt signal to take over the control of the CPU for its execution. That is, the ongoing process executing with the CPU has not yet completed its execution. Before its completion itself, another process will raise a request that is it wants to execute with the CPU. So, in this case, the operating system will suspend the ongoing process. Whatever the process is executing with the CPU, the operating system will suspend it and whatever the process raised the interrupt signal, that will be assigned to the CPU for execution. So, the modern operating system, if you are considering, it is completely interrupt driven process. And there are two types of interrupts it will raise. One is hardware interrupt and another one is software interrupt. And the hardware interrupt, if you are considering in this sense, it will be raised by any I.O. devices. Input-output devices, that will raise an interrupt signal. And the software interrupt, if you are considering, it is otherwise called trap, that is, through the software port, it will raise an interrupt signal. That is called software interrupt. Generally, if you are considering the OS, it will sit quietly. If there is no process to execute, there is no user to respond, and there is no I.O. devices. That is, if none of the process executes with the CPU and no user intervention, and there is no I.O. devices to service in the sense, operating system will sit quietly. It will wait for an event to happen. And that event is nothing but an interrupt. Okay, this event will always signal by interrupt. Generally, if you are telling interrupt in the sense, it is nothing but hardware interrupt. Or a trap in the sense, it is a software interrupt. So, hardware interrupt in the sense, it will be raised by any hardware devices. Generally, with the help of input-output devices. And a trap, if you are considering in the sense, it is otherwise called exceptional program. In the software code itself, we will write a piece of code to raise an exception. That is called trap or software interrupt and this trap is otherwise called software generator interrupt and this is triggered by an error message or by specific user request program that is the specific user request program in this sense they will write a piece of code to raise a interrupt request okay to perform specific services that is called software interrupt whenever the software interrupt or trap was raised in this sense separate interrupt service routine will be provided to deal with that type of interrupt. So, for every software interrupt, there is a corresponding interrupt service routine. That is a separate code segment which decide what action to be taken for that particular interrupt signal. So, for every specific error, separate code will decide what action to be taken. Okay, that is called interrupt service routine. So, interrupt service routine only will handle all type of software interrupts. So, for every type of software interrupt, there will be a code to handle it. That is called interrupt service routine. And if you are considering the hardware and software resources, it will always shared by both the operating system and user. Both will share the hardware as well as software resources. But if you are considering in a multi-programming or multi-sharing environment, many process will execute parallelly. At a time, more than one process will execute with the CPU. So, in that time, suppose if one process raises any error or a bug is created with one process in the sense, parallelly many processes executing. So, one process bug may affect the other process also. It may delay the other process also. Even it may change the output of the other process also. That is possible. Okay. So, here protection is required. For example, if a process stuck with an infinite loop, it may affect the other process also. It won't allow the other process to execute because it will make the system to hand, right? So, in that case, the other process also cannot able to complete its execution. That is the main problem in multi-programming or multi-sharing environment. So, proper production should be given. So, properly designed operating system must ensure the incorrect or malicious function of one program that should not affect the other program. So, whenever you are executing with the multi-programming or multi-sharing environment, the operating system should protect. The errorness of one process will not affect the other process. That protection should be given. So, how they will give the protection? That protection we can able to implement by dual mode and multi-mode operations. 
So, for proper execution of the operating system, there should be a difference between operating system code execution and user code execution. There should be a difference. So, whenever the user code is executing, it should be in separate mode. And whenever the operating system code is executing, it should be in separate mode. That will en only ensure the protection of the proper execution of the operating system. So, there are two modes of operation here. One is user mode where normally all user programs can execute. And another one is called kernel mode. This kernel mode is otherwise called supervisor mode or system mode or privileged mode where only privileged instructions or operating system instructions will be executed with this kernel mode. So, in order to ensure the production, the operating system will distinguish between user mode and kernel mode. So, here they will use a bit. That bit is called mode bit. Okay, that is added to the hardware of the computer to indicate which mode currently the process is executing. So, the mode bit for the kernel mode is 0 and the mode bit for user mode is 1. So, if it is executing with a 0 in the sense that is in the operating system kernel mode some process is executing. If the mode bit value is 1 in the sense user process is executing that is the mean. Initially, when the system boots in the sense of initial hardware that will start in the kernel mode that is called bootstrap program. That is, once the system is switched on, the initial code that will boot with the system is nothing but the bootstrap program. That is, initially, the execution of the computer will start with the kernel mode only. And in the kernel mode only, the operating system will be loaded. So, initially, operating system will be loaded. Then only, it will allow the other user applications to execute in the user mode. Whenever a trap, this is a software interrupt or interrupt occurs in the sense, the hardware will switch from the user mode to kernel mode. So, here generally process will execute with the user mode only. Only when the interrupt or trap is raised in the sense, in that case, the hardware only will switch from user mode to kernel mode. User mode value is 1, kernel mode value is 0, mode bit value. So, it will switch from user mode to kernel mode. That time, mode bit value, it will change it. So, if the kernel mode wants to execute in the sense, mode bit value will be 0. So, the dual mode operation will help to protect the operating system from the error net user. That is, if the user program raises some error, in the sense, that will not affect the operating system mode. So, the dual mode operation will help for protecting the operating system from error net user. That is, if one user is executing a program and that program raises any errorless message in the sense, that will not affect the operating system mode also and also the other users also it won't affect. So, mainly this distinction is provided by user mode and kernel mode. This is the picture which explains the user mode process and kernel mode process how it is executing. So, initially if you are considering in the sense, once the system boots in the sense, initially it will be in the kernel mode and then the user process will be assigned for execution. The user process will be executing. All the time, most of the time, user process only will be executing with the CPU. Okay. So, now the user process is executing. And here, it will get a system call. So, system call in the sense, interrupt will be raised. Okay. Either it may be a hardware interrupt or it may be a software interrupt. Through any interrupt process, the interrupt will be raised. That is called system call. Once the interrupt is raised in the sense, here, the mode bit value, it will change from 1 to 0. So, now the process will be switched to kernel. So, in the kernel mode only, it will execute the system call. Why the interrupt is raised? What is the action it has to take? That is, what is the code it has to execute? It will execute it here. The system call purpose, it will execute it here. Once the execution is completed in the sense, the mode bit value, it will change to 1. So, once the mode bit value is changed to 1 in the sense, it will return control to the user mode. So, when the user mode value is 1 in the sense, again, it will resume the execution of the user process. Whatever it is suspended, it will resume its execution with the user process. So, whenever kernel mode wants to execute in the sense, it will, it will raise an interrupt. Once the interrupt is raised in the sense, mode bit value will be changed from 1 to 0. It will go to kernel mode. And here it will execute the system call. Once it completed its execution, it will change the mode bit value to 1 and start execute the user process. So, this is a continuous process executes within the system. So, here user mode if you are considering mode bit value is 1 and kernel mode if you are considering mode bit value is 0.
so here this is nothing but dual mode operation so one mode is user mode and second one is kernel both the mode it will execute how in the sense with the help of interrupt so only we are telling the modern operating system is a interrupt drive one process and whatever the instructions it is executing within the kernel mode in the sense that instructions always we will tell it as privileged instructions or operating system instructions and these operating system instructions it should not execute in user mode it will execute only in the kernel mode the privileged instructions it will execute only in the kernel mode if an attempt to execute these privileged instructions in the user mode in the sense the hardware will not allow to execute immediately illegal or trap message will be sent to the operating system so privileged instructions you cannot able to execute with the user for example instruction to switch to kernel mode and this will be done only by the operating system only user cannot able to change the mode with value that is user cannot able to switch from user mode to kernel mode or kernel mode to user mode that purpose will not be done in the user mode it will done only in the kernel mode and these instruction privileged instructions will be given by the operating system only okay and also assigning input output devices control this also will be implemented by the kernel mode only which input device will be assigned to which user process which output device sh should be assigned to which user process that decision that instruction will be given only by the operating system mode only and also timer management interrupt management these are all the privileged instructions it will execute only by in the kernel mode that is by the operating system only it will not be handled by the user mode suppose if you are trying to handle in the sense what will happen it will be a trap to the operating system it will raise a illegal message and it will be a trap to the operating system okay so privileged instructions is nothing but operating system instructions in user mode only they can able to execute the process whichever hardware they want to be serviced in the sense they will raise a request to the operating system only the operating system only will allocate the input device and output device and other resources whichever it is required to execute in the user process the user directly cannot able to take over the control of input or output devices that is not possible okay and also time management they cannot able to control the system the system control will be totally handed over to the operating system only they cannot able to implement time management and interrupt they cannot able to raise only a trap they will raise whenever the user trying to misuse the instructions in the sense privileged instructions in the sense in that case trap will be raised okay but user mode we cannot able to raise any interrupt through system calls only we can able to raise the interrupt it may be a hardware interrupt or it may be a software interrupt and there are different modes apart from this dual mode dual mode in the sense one is user mode another one is kernel mode apart from these two modes there are other modes also we can able to execute with the operating system for example if you are considering your virtualization the support of virtualization will have a separate mode so if you want to implement virtualization with the system in this that will have a separate mode that will be implemented by the virtual machine manager vmm and the virtualization management software so this if you are considering in this sense the virtualization process will be implemented by a separate mode that is virtualization mode only and here vmm have more privileges than user process so user process if you are considering privileged instructions they cannot able to execute but compared to the user process vmm that is virtual machine manager will have some control not complete control of the operating system will have some control some privileged instructions we can able to execute with vmm mode also okay so apart from the user mode and kernel mode if virtualization concept is implemented in the sense that time vmm mode also it is possible so these are all the different modes of operations we can able to implement with the operating system generally if you are considering in the sense user mode and kernel mode this vmm is a special case okay thank you for watching this video 